What is happening everyone, welcome back to another video, and today we have ourselves the Vabs D5000 Turbo Projector, so without further ado, let's get right into it. So yeah, you have to take a look at the unboxing, this is a native 1080p projector with 600 ANSI lumens. It's got Bluetooth, dual band Wi-Fi for wireless casting, a built-in video player, as well as a 10 watt speaker. The rear infrared sensor, and yes, there's a front one as well. Audio out, two USB ports, and two HDMI ports. This is the keystone correction dial. On the right side we have the exhaust, and on the left side we have the intake vent, which does in fact have a dust filter. We got four nice rubber feet on the bottom, an adjustable front foot right here for height adjustment, and lastly on the bottom we have the standard mounting points. And yes, this is in fact a protruding lens, so it's going to be a bit annoying when removing and installing the lens cover. So yeah, all that comes with this really nice carrying case, as well as a 100 inch flexible non-wrinkle white projecting screen. All for $270 with a current $40 coupon on Amazon.com. Now the question of course, is any of this worth it for $270 in 2021? Yes, it is a 1080p projector and it's got a nice carrying case, a projection screen and so far things look pretty good, right? Well, if you have read the Amazon reviews, you'd know what I'm talking about. But for now, let's go ahead and take a look at what this projector has to offer and see if it's any good. And we'll talk about the launch issue. The issue was there and now I have two of them. Long story short, both of them are currently working perfectly fine. So with all that being said, we're going to go ahead and check out the picture quality, talk about the brightness, talk about the response time with numbers, as well as the fan noise, speaker quality, and all that good stuff. So let's take a look. All right, so here we are with the projector, and as you have saw, the projector did actually start up pretty quickly. However, we got the usual fan noise with these type of projectors. This has been going on for as far as I can remember with cheap projectors. They're always pretty loud and usually not all that great. However, this one is doing a pretty good job as far as image quality and brightness is concerned. Speaking of which, we are currently set up with a single light bulb in the room, just to give you an idea of what it looks like with some ambient light. Here we go ahead and turn that off. So what you're looking at here is about 105 inches worth of screen and the projector is about 12 feet away from the wall. The left side is pretty good, the right side however we do have the other white wall which is kind of reflecting and slightly washing out the right side of the image. You'll notice that the actual projection isn't perfectly square. Now that of course could be my wall or it could very well be the projector as the lens elements here may not have the best distortion correction. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the menus real quick as they are not the greatest. It's definitely one of the worst menus I've seen so far. So let's take a look. All right, so to get into the menu, go ahead and press the menu button. And right off the bat, you'll notice our first issue with the UI. We currently have the projector muted and the mute indicator is covering the menu. And at the same time, we can actually see the video being played in the background inside the little menu box. It's kind of transparent, which is something that should actually be done on the actual blue part of the screen here. So what it should look like is a little something like this. But instead, we don't get that. We get something that is absolutely hideous with a bunch of wasted room. So for that, I'm going to go ahead and just lower the volume all the way down and move on. So the first tab we have here is the display tab. We have three presets, PC, whiteboard, movie, and user. And to be honest, I usually set up user profiles for a lot of projectors, but in this case, I kind of just left it on PC since it does look pretty on point right out of the box, which is really appreciated. So set it on PC and move on with life. And if you want, you can copy the settings from PC and kind of tweak some things to your liking. Speaking of liking, the projector is slightly a bit on the warmer side, so if you want, uh, set everything on 50, maybe increase sharpness a little bit and increase the color to about 60% and set the color temperature to cool. Or if you like the warm, then just keep it at normal. And that's what it looks like. It's uh, much more vibrant, much more sharper, looks pretty fantastic. Really like how this actual projector looks like. Um, yeah, the Amazon reviews, they do really complain about the issue, which I'll talk about again in just a bit here. But once again, let's go over everything here and then talk about the issue and then conclude the video. Next up, we have sound mode, and here we have the music and the movie presets. The movie preset is very low volume, and as you can see, there's not a whole lot that changed. They're mostly all set to 50. As for music, it is actually bumped up, and it does sound louder and more fuller. However, if you actually want to go ahead and cheat with this projector without using an external speaker, you can go all the way down to user and set everything to 100%, which will actually double the audio volume and make this projector sound a bit louder. And no, it does not distort. It actually does a pretty good job at keeping the quality when these settings are maxed out alongside the volume slider. 
Overall, the audio quality and volume is decent for a small room. However, if you want something a bit more clear or louder, then you can go ahead and get yourself a pair of speakers. And there are a couple options that I can recommend in the description down below when it comes to USB speakers. In fact, I already have a video on some small budget mini USB speakers, and I have two more speaker reviews coming up, one USB and one wall powered. So stay tuned for that. Next up, we have the image tab, and inside the image, we don't have a whole lot that we can uh, make use of. We have the aspect ratio, not that useful. We have projection, which can be done with the shortcut on the actual remote. We can go ahead and just flip around the image. And then we have the HDMI range, which is very confusing. It's currently set to YUV, and whenever you change it to anything else, it's going to look like a complete mess, as you can see here. Finally, we have the timer for when the projector turns off if there's nothing actually being displayed. We have the quote unquote other, which is just languages, factory reset, and status, which will give you the software version as well as the LED used hours in right here. Finally, we have Bluetooth and you can go ahead and turn that on or off. And basically you can go ahead and connect a Bluetooth pair of headphones and have audio transferred that way. Or of course, if you have Bluetooth compatible speakers like a soundbar or some bookshelf speakers. So next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the image quality, edge dash focus, vignetting, and all that good stuff. So let's take a look. Oh my God, that's the what? We got dial-up simulator, on point, very authentic. Well, I guess we're not going anywhere with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, save these as JPEG and try again. And we're back, so let's take a look. Can we load them up now with the JPEG? Yes, we can, okay. And uh, can I load the preview? Yep, there we go. So don't load PNGs, this thing just cannot handle it. So this is something I came up with. It's not the most accurate or scientific, but it's something. Now this is actually a 4K image, so we're displaying it on a 1080p projector, which isn't the best idea. I'm probably gonna make a new version of this that works directly with 1080p, but nonetheless, we can actually see all the text that I have here, and everything is pretty much in focus. We can even see the small text right here that's on a black background, and it's very, very tiny, and we can actually still read all the letters. And so far, to be honest, it's doing pretty well. It's uh, very in focus and quite surprising, actually. This is definitely one of the best projectors that I've reviewed so far. And um, I wasn't expecting a whole lot after the first issue that I experienced. Next up, we got a 4K Metroid wallpaper that has been upscaled. And uh, we can see that 4K images are actually kind of compressed. The projector is definitely not showing the image quality as it should be. I believe this is 16 by 10, so it is slightly taller and it's not using the complete projector edges. And uh, if you notice, the actual projector edges here are not uh, visible. So very good contrast levels. There are some virtual black bars right now, but we cannot actually see them since the actual black color is not being displayed. The bottom right corner of this photo is completely black and it just blends in with the natural color of the wall. So now if you have a blacked out room with no reflective walls on the sides, this would look fantastic. I mean, it's already looking pretty great, but it could definitely get even better if your room wasn't really reflecting all that light and bouncing back into the screen. And while we're here, the way I was actually projecting these images was again through the built-in media player. So let's go ahead and play Spider-Man and see if it actually works. And what do you know, it's not supported. So like always, a lot of projectors that have built-in players that are not Android based, I would recommend to stay away from them. But if you really want, you can go ahead and re-encode your videos or just stick with downloaded YouTube videos and you should be good to go. Now, one nice thing to see here is that the actual media controls are properly laid out and are very easy to uh, navigate through. The only thing that would have been nice is to actually be able to control the actual timeline directly and uh, we only have the fast word forward pause and play to actually get that going for us. So next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the screen mirroring and then jump into the actual response times of the projector and see if it's any good for gaming. Now with screen mirroring, we have two different options. We have Mirrorcast, which works on most Android devices, except Google Pixel phones. I know, ironic, but like I said, Mirrorcast in general works on most devices, including LG, Samsung, and your Windows laptop or PC. And to switch between the two different options, you can go ahead and press the OK button, and it'll say switching, and then it'll switch to the DLNA, which is the iOS compatible version. Now, the downside of this, if you have never used one of these things, is that you actually have to connect your iPhone's Wi-Fi directly to the projector's Wi-Fi network, which is called lollipop-ce99ca with a password of 12345678 which means if you're trying to stream YouTube, then you're kind of out of luck. And you're pretty much stuck with what you have on your iPhone, whether it's family videos, pictures, or some stuff that you've already downloaded. So right now we're casting my laptop screen here and it's showing up as a second screen running at 30 Hertz. And no, I have no control over that. 
However, one thing to know here is that it's kind of stuck in the whiteboard uh, color profile, which is weird. And doing anything else here just doesn't do anything. It's just stuck in this profile. So everything looks very washed out and not all that great. But with that said, I'll test it out with another Android device and uh, let you guys know if we can actually get a cleaner picture. All right, so here it is plugged in directly to my laptop via HDMI, running at a super smooth 60 FPS. Now, of course, a lot of projectors out there do accept a 60 FPS signal, but instead display like 24 or 30 FPS. And lastly, for the actual response time test, we have some pretty good results. We've got roughly around 25 at the top, 35 for the middle, and 42 for the bottom which is pretty decent for a budget projector and it's in line with the Vanco V600 that we have reviewed in the past. Alright, so uh, woke up this morning, turned on the projector, and surely enough, we have the issue once again, and this time, it's on the good model. So, this is the second model that was sent out. I've been recording last night for a couple hours, and we can see that the projection screen is now completely messed up, just like the original one that I was sent out, which later actually fixed itself when I stopped using it. Yeah, this is the issue that everyone has been talking about. This is the issue that I've been kind of hyping up this entire video, and... Uh, yeah, it's a complete mess. We have a bunch of lines going up and down. And on top of that, we got this white outline vignette kind of thing. Well, that's quite unfortunate. The old projector is back to being broken again, and you can tell that this is the second projector by that little dot right there, which is a piece of dirt on the LCD. And so the unfortunate conclusion, we have saw what these projectors are capable of when they're working optimally, as well as when they're not. Both projectors have met the same fate, of having a defective screen, with the first model actually having three different issues. One of them was the LCD kind of dirty, so there was actually dirt inside the LCD that got in during manufacturing. Then we had the screen issue, and finally it stopped accepting an HDMI signal from my Chromecast. Then they sent me the second model, it worked fine for a couple days, and again, as I was recording this video, it met the same fate. But what's common with these two is that you can leave them for one day to rest, and on the fourth day, they will start working fine once again, which is very random. It probably has something to do with temperature. These are one of the brightest projectors I have reviewed by far and that could be the problem. Maybe the LCD just cannot handle the heat output that's being pushed by the LED inside. But yeah, it's quite sad. I probably would have recommended it with the coupon code, but let's just say that the projector does not have that LCD issue. What would be my other complaints? Well, first of all, the actual fan noise is too loud, especially for 2022 standards. Again, it's bright, the focus is great, and the image quality, frame rate, and response time are pretty good. But again, the fan is too loud, the user interface is kind of wonky, and the remote interface is not the best. The projection screen is kind of good, it's good for outdoor use, and it's good for indoor use only if you don't have a clear, flat, white wall. Since these things will actually pass light through them. So it will give you kind of a bloomy effect and will wash out the image. And with that being said, that is all for this video, so thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone.